So you definitely, I'm sure, considered for Alima's first title defense. Had you heard anything um, before any of these fights were set up? Uh, before their fight got set up? Yeah, theirs or yours, whichever was. Well, pretty much all at the same time because I think we got booked. She got booked for for her, this fight, and I got booked for another fight. Pretty much around the same time. Um, you know, I had words before that I was most likely going to fight for the title. I was going to fight Elima, so I was getting ready for this and even start switching my training to fight her. Um, not that I thought that I, I'm the only one who deserve it. It's not this. It's because that was the word that has been spread, that this is what's going to happen. So uh, that's definitely the fight that I wanted. I don't care who's going to win the belt uh, this weekend, but this is the person I want to fight next. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Very bluntly, you are a bigger name and star than Alejandra. Are you surprised that you didn't get the title shot immediately? I was surprised, hurt, and I don't honestly. I don't know anything about her. I've never seen her fight before. I don't know. I don't know if she's good or not. It's not like I can see. Ah, uh, she. You, we got some athletes. Sometimes they just have two fights, and it's just like wow. Like the sport, it's a new sport, and. The way they teach now, you improve so much faster than for us 10 years ago that we had to drive two hours for a jiu-jitsu coach or a boxing coach and try to put it all together. So there's some surprising athletes sometimes popping out if you don't know their name, but they're gonna get known pretty quick. So maybe she's one of those, I don't know, but I didn't know anything about her. So there's other girls I would have think even, not just me, other girls in Bellator that I would maybe think of maybe before, before this girl. Now, with, with, with Christina was kind of uh, a replacement opponent, and you know it's a kind of a unique situation. You had said that um, you're kind of excited about being able to find Christina, who's pretty much been the upset queen of, of Bellator this past this past year. What uh, challenges and what kind of uh, what kind of uh, things do you expect from Christina? But first of all, that's that's the fight I should have gone from the beginning. I think she's the one who makes more sense. So I was very motivated when I got the call for her. I think it's gonna be an awesome fight. Um, I mean, she's a full striker and I don't need to hide that this is what I love to do. So I really enjoyed this camp because I was doing everything that I liked that sometimes I haven't done for years. Um, so I'm pretty excited with the fight. You come, in with a, you come from a strong camp at ATT and um, a lot of great world champions there as well. I mean, how, how was it for you to prep for this fight? and? Um, you know, were you, were you, um, you have obviously a lot of tough strikers there as well, so did that help out a lot in terms of the strike fight camp? Yeah, that helped a lot. I had good partners for this camp to, to train with. Um, we have a lot of strikers, not even, you know, really known in the UFC or Bellet or anyway. We have some girls with more of a karate background. I work a lot with Trisha Cicero, which she, she's, she's coming from karate, so she have fast kick. This is what I needed to work the most, is that speed on those kick. Um, but I had many different kind of girls and, and guys to train with. With, with Rory McDonald, um, part of part of the part of the uh, Bellator uh, Nation right now, and yourself being bo both Canadian, obviously, um, you would like like to see yourself up in Canada um, at some point because it's been several years before, since uh, Bellator has been up north of the border. So, um, how excited would you be to, to be able to maybe win tonight and then to have a title fight maybe up north of the border? Oh my God! I cannot even explain the feeling. <laughs> That would be really a dream come true to fight for a title. The experience I have for my title fight in Australia was absolutely amazing. And um, but to fight in my own country at this point of my career, that would be just like a, a true dream come true. I don't care where, but I mean, Quebec or Montreal will be <laughs> the perfect spot. Can I just um, can I just ask that question again um, about you know when? Valerie, when you when you found out you weren't fighting for the title, obviously we were there with you in uh, Newcastle where you beat Kate Jackson, mm -hmm. um, and it looked like we were asking you then about a title fight next. Has it kind of lit a fire under you ahead of this camp, knowing that you're not getting the title now, to know that you want the victory and surely you get it next? What made me the most upset about it was not even, I always believe like the right time is gonna come, you just gotta keep winning. What I was so pissed off, really, really, really mad, is I wait seven months to fight, thinking that was gonna be for a championship fight. Why would I wait seven months for a random fight? So I was ready to fight after the, the fight in, a, in Newcastle. I had no injuries. I honestly could have fight a month after. And the word was like, be patient, be patient, be patient. And then seven months later, this is what's happening. 
So I felt like I was literally just lost seven months of what I could have done, maybe two fights, and I've seen other girls fight two fights. I was really upset about that. Um, but, you know, I, I don't like to say I deserve it more. I mean, all the girls, they're really good girls in Bellator that deserve also a shot. We all want a shot, obviously. So it's not that. It's not like I'm saying, like, I'm the only one who deserve it. It's like, don't make me waste my time like this. So, yeah, I was mad. <laughs> um, the, the, the girl you're up against on on the girl you're up against on Friday night, the lady you're up against on Friday night, we've seen what she can do in the stand up. Um, you know, most kind of sage or wise, you know, observers of, of MMA know you're very rounded in terms of your game. Are you going to test what she's got on the ground in this fight as well? Yes, I will. I mean, I, I feel like I have way more skills, way more experience than her. For sure, I have more experience. And I think Emily fought her very well. Maybe not with the best game plan for her skills, but you know, I start, of course I watched the fight over and over because now I'm fighting Christina, but she had such a big size disadvantage and she showed, you know, a lot of things that you could do against Christina. So, um, You've been working fight. on that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What's probably been the most surprising thing you have about Bellator in terms of this division? Obviously there's a lot of young talent right now. Um, it's a really good di diverse, I think. Alimali said it best, it's whether there's a lot of young, hungry talent here, plus there's only a few veterans like yourself that are currently that are currently a part of the uh, Bellator. But tell me, the, the, as a division as a whole, what do you think of, think of, of Bellator as a whole? And just, just your kind of your thoughts on, um, you know, the growth of the division um, in Bellator. It's a huge motivating, uh, it's a huge motivation for me. Uh, and I always wanted to push for a female athlete, you know, grow any division, especially this division. I've been fighting for so long that to push a 125 division. So, you know, I like always to feel like I'm opening doors. I make a, a better a future for all female fighters and it makes me feel great about myself. So one like of the that. great things for you, I think, as well now, is given that announcement yesterday and the fact the zone goes also out in Canada. The uh, what? The, the zone, the zone goes the streaming, out. Streaming so to make the, the stream, live. The, 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 the press conference the yesterday in New York, in which Bellator signed a deal with the zone, who are a digital streaming service, a very big digital streaming service. Mm -hmm. You can tell I didn't know about it. No, but, 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 but it's a, <laughs> I'm in my whole little world. But, 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 I was on the fight yeah, No, no, but just to explain to you then, <laughs> September 29th, they're launching, and, and Gegard and uh, Rory are debuting on that platform. Um, it's also on Paramount, but also on DAZN, this new streaming service owned by Perform Group, who do football, Champions League football, they do in, in five different territories, but Canada is one of them. Yeah, yeah, and so, Europe and, and all that as well, too. So it's a, it's a streaming platform where it's going to be pretty much worldwide, so you'll yeah. get more, more exposure. More, yeah, yeah so, more exposure, that's great. Well, would you like to be on that card, given that it may well go out in Canada as well? Of course. And... I mean, he's fighting with Sassy, right? The, yes, the, yeah, it's September 29th, San Jose, but it will I, go I, out. I love both fighters. I would love to be on that card. Mm. And yeah, I want to talk more about uh, just where the sport's gone for women. You've been around for a long time, but it seems like, especially within the last two years, there's a new surge going on. We have the women headlining the card, um, this division that they're, they're stacking up. Just from your perspective, does it seem like there's some strong momentum going on recently? There is a huge momentum, huge. And that's funny, like this week I saw our old friend of mine, David Luazo, he's not that old, I'm just <laughs> with each other for 20 years. Just, he was on UFC 42. And he was, a, we were talking about the bonus, fight of the night and stuff like this. He says, man, I had fight of the night $500. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, I got fight of the night. This is not like 30 years ago. We talk about, so it's not just in the women's side, it's on, the sport has changed, has evolved so much. People need, we always want more, but just think of five years ago and just think about 10 years ago. Just think about 10 years ago. So I'm coming from, it's been 20 years I'm doing this sport. I don't like to say this because mm. I'm getting older, but just think of what I've seen 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Who cares about female athlete, about female in any type of martial arts? So for all these little girls walking in the gym right now, Sometimes they give us more attention than the guys now because mm. they know it only takes a couple of fights We're gonna get there. There's not so many women So and that makes the sport even more interesting because we have the quality of training that the guys used to have too So it's been huge. I mean the evolution is great and historically. I mean obviously I don't know For definite but six women on this card 
So it's it kind of historic. It's eight. Sorry, yes, it's eight. It is eight. Eight, eight, eight women on the card. Yeah. Oh, so histori really, wow. historically, this is a very important card for for women's MMA with with it. Bellator. This is great. This is awesome. I mean, is that more women than guys on the card? It's pretty much even. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is awesome. I want yeah. to see more of that. The other thing about it, you know, having covered a lot of different sports over many years as a journalist, is that um, MMA has got the opportunity, having had women in at the top level in events with men as well. Um, you know, we look at the, dispar uh, the, the, the disparity in um, tennis where men are paid a lot more, in soccer where they're paid a lot more. There's an opportunity, because it's such a young sport, to create parity. Um, very early on in the sport, and I think if it's fair to say, is that happening right now? I'm not sure it's happening for how fighters get paid compared to men to women. But what I can say is, for women, there's a way to climb way faster for a better paycheck than a a, a, a woman's gonna have like five fights, but maybe make more money than guys have five fights. Mm, mm. But at the end, the top salary. I don't know about that. We have but at least within five, they're capture. almost challenging for a title by then, or you know, because of the kind of newness or the it's a near fight division in many ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it is. And it's lit a new fire in you, maybe. It's what? Has it lit like a new excitement and fire in you? It is, but you know, I have so when I signed up with Bellator, I had like a big plan, a big dream to be. I really wanted to be busy, so it's like I've been waiting for this moment. I really, really want to do good tonight. Uh, you were there at the fight in Newcastle, yeah, yeah. and I was so nervous for all this negotiation, like it, signing with this new promotion, not fight for a year, and then finally broke the ice, and I just feel like I don't want anything to stop me. Then on top of you losing your luggage, right? <laughs> this is like, that was the worst trip ever. We talk about it all the time, me and Mike, and... I mean, we stay positive. When you're with good people, you don't need luggage. You don't need anything, okay? And thanks God I was not fighting at 115. I would have never made weight. We got the luggage, the day of the, the win, so. And it rained That's the whole funny. five days you were there or something, didn't it? It was horrible. Oh, come it was on, disgusting. coming from Florida and flip-flops, landing <laughs> in Newcastle, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asked ask Mike Brown if he was homeless. He was walking on the street and nothing was matching. He has this big bird. And the lady says, You have a home? Are you okay? I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. To, um, to talk you know. about um, Christina Williams real quick, you know, obviously, you know, she upset Heather Hardy, Emily Dakota. She is looking to go for number three. Is mm -hmm. there any of that in your mind that she has made a reputation of beating the bigger name? Yeah, she did. She made her way there, and this is why, like, but I don't think anyone have said she doesn't deserve to. She's not at this level. She proved herself. She only have two fight in MMA, two pro fight in MMA, but she fought really tough, two really tough girl. And Hardy doesn't have that much MMA fight, but she has so many fight in boxing. And Emily is top ranking in Bellator. Beating her, put her right there. So. But it was the styles that helped her, and certainly Hardy is just a come forward. Raging Bell, isn't and she? She was not you ready know? for this fight. She was yeah. not prepared. This is the kind of fight you have to prepare for. And this is sometimes I don't like to fight someone that you have no footage. Or I really like to watch fights over and over and all. Sometimes almost every day, mm. you get used to used to the tempo, what they're throwing. It's like you know what they're gonna do. But when you have nothing, you do your own thing. But sometimes it's just a bad surprise, and it's hard to adjust in a fight when you haven't prepared at all for this. So yeah. Thank you very much.